Hi students. In today's module we are going to learn how to draw the structure of human brain. Now to draw the structure of human brain the first step that we have to do is what we will make a small telephone. First put the rough marking with the dotted structure. Then draw it clearly. Now see, it looks like a telephone. This is the first step. Second step we'll be doing here. You just draw a structure like a tree which will be having three flower like structures clear this much now next we will be drawing a comma like structure Now I think all of you remember when we were small we used to fly kite. So what we will do? We will draw a structure like kite here. Fine. Perfect this much. Now next what we will be doing we will come across this structure. Now here you have to come in the same way till the end. Then draw a curve. A curve. Then you will draw pituitary gland another curve another curve and then another curve fine now from other side you come in the same way here then go to the structure like this just rub it erase it with the help of eraser then next you come another curve then come a V like structure and then you come down this much hope this much is clear to you now what we will be doing we will draw the structure that is the for brain, cerebrum. Now to draw the cerebrum, you have to come from here. Like this. Go in this way. Commit. It. It's very simple. How you feel comfortable? You can draw in that way. So this is your complete cerebrum. Now we will draw the structure. 
that is cerebellum in cerebellum we have drawn this flower like structure now you will come here just like the branches of the tree draw it good next you have drawn the flower like structure now we'll have a proper layer for that you can just imagine a type of cover just put small small lines in it this is ready which part is this it is the seri bellum now we have completed the inner part we will start drawing the outer layer of the brain now when we draw the outer layer of the brain we have to come from here one layer layer first done next we will draw another layer draw it from here now when you come to this end you have to keep in mind you come till the pituitary this layer first we'll bring it to down down where complete here the first layer and the second one will come to the pituitary and then after pituitary you go on drawing a triangular structure again like this so complete this layer also when you come to this end now you bring it straight now this is what we have drawn here you put a comma like structure this is how you have to draw brain now let us see the way to label it as we know that brain has three parts we talk about the forebrain now the forebrain comes where from this region to this region we call it as forebrain forebrain consists of what cerebrum and then diencephalon forebrain it consists of two parts first one we call it as this is the part we call it as seri brain cerebrum the largest part of human brain and then this human brain is protected by a protective layer and that protective layer we call it as 
cranium or skull. Cranium or skull. This is about forebrain. Let us try to understand the function of forebrain, cerebrum. What is the function of cerebrum? It is the seat of consciousness, intelligence, imagination, reasoning, then what else? Emotions and willpower. It is the center of all the mental activities. Another part of forebrain, we call it as a diencephalon. Diencephalon, it consists of thalamus and then hypothalamus. In your book, it is given only hypothalamus. This is the part. It is hypothalamus. Hypo. Hypothalamus. So, this are the part of forebrain. What are they? Cerebrum and then diencephalon. Diencephalon consists of hypothalamus as well as thalamus. Let us see what are the function of hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, it regulates body temperature, water balance, appetite and sleep. It also controls autonomic nervous system, ANS and pituitary gland. So, hypothalamus. Hypothalamus can control pituitary gland. We know that pituitary gland is the master of all other glands in our body. But pituitary gland is controlled by hypothalamus. So this is our forebrain. Now we have midbrain. Now when we talk about midbrain, midbrain is a very small area. This is the part called midbrain. It is midbrain. Now, what is the function of midbrain? It serves as relay station between forebrain and then hindbrain. So, midbrain is the relay station for forebrain and then hindbrain. The information is stimulated with the help of midbrain. If the messages, impulses has to be sent to the forebrain, then it has to pass through the midbrain. If any information comes from the cerebrum, it has to pass through the midbrain. So, midbrain is the center. Center for all the, uh, we call it uh, stimulation of messages and all. Now we will come to the last part of the brain. That is known as hindbrain. Now hindbrain consists of what? It consists of pons. Hindbrain, it consists of pons. Pons and then medulla. Medulla oblongata we call it. Medulla oblongata and then cerebellum. This is our cerebellum. Cerebellum. So these three, these three are the parts of hind brain.
Now what are the functions of pons? It has the controlling center of mastication, facial expression, respiration and forms the conducting pathways. Next, the function of cerebellum. Cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain. It is responsible, cerebellum is responsible for voluntary actions such as maintaining the posture and equilibrium that is balance of the body. It coordinates and controls the movement of muscles in actions like walking in a straight line, running, riding in a bicycle or picking up a pencil, dropping up any things, all such activities it, are con it is controlled by cerebellum. Then we have medulla, medulla oblongata. What is its function? It controls all the involuntary actions of the body. Involuntary actions are what? Which cannot be controlled by human's will. Such as breathing, heartbeat, movement of digestive tract, blood pressure, salivation, vomiting, enzyme secretions and all other activities. Now we will come to the part. This is the major part of the brain which controls all other endocrine glands. We call it as pituitary pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is the master gland of all the endocrine glands because it controls all other glands. Though it is very small like a P-shaped but then also it has that largest functions. So many secretions are taking place from pituitary gland only. So pituitary gland controls all other glands hence it is called the master gland. But this pituitary gland is controlled by which one? It is controlled by hypothalamus. Then we have at the end where our brain is connected to the to the vertebral column and that we call it as spinal cord. Spinal cord. Spinal cord. So students, this is all about brain. Based on this only, you will be getting the questions in your SSLC board exam, the structure of brain, be perfect with that and all the functions of the parts of the brain. Bye, we will meet you in the next video with another diagram. To get more information click the link given in the description below the video.